wonderful. What a great turnout we have. This is such a wonderful group of people, and I'm so excited for our conversation today. So the first question we have for you is, as you assess the nation's overall health and <coughs> well-being, uh, you've said that mental health is this generation's number one health crisis. Can you talk about why mental health has become so significant to you as Surgeon General? Oh, absolutely. And, and I'm so glad that we're doing this conversation together. And you have such an inspiring story, uh, not just for the students here, but for all of us. So thank you for being a part of this conversation. You know, Emma, the reason to me like, mental health became so important has to do with what we just went through with COVID over the last few years. It created invisible wounds. But even before then, I saw mental health challenges all across our country that communities were dealing with. Just I'm curious, just out of by a show of hands, how many people here know somebody who's struggling with loneliness or isolation in your lives? Yeah, that's almost everyone. I'll tell you that I ask this question everywhere I go in America, the response is exactly the same. I'm able to speak to my personal experiences having ADHD, OCD, and anxiety. And I remember when I first became Miss America, feeling like people wouldn't take me seriously because I was so open about my, my mental health struggles. But I was so fortunate to hear from so many of uh, the people that I would speak to that they experienced similar things and how much it meant to see public figures using their platforms to speak about their personal experiences. And can I just say, I'm, I just want to appreciate just how much courage it took to be vulnerable and to be open. And, and that's actually, I think, such an important message for everyone here, which is that when we are honest about what we're going through, that's not a sign of weakness, it's actually a sign of strength. We have had a growing problem with mental health in our country for a long time, uh, one that it's high time we finally address, and not just address through more access to treatment, but also that we address through dealing with the root causes uh, of that crisis. One of the reasons I issued an advisory on the epidemic of loneliness a few months ago is because loneliness and isolation are just as important public health threats as smoking and obesity. But lastly, we can all do something about it. This is a good thing. You don't have to wait for an act of Congress to address loneliness in your life or the lives of people around you, thank God, because we don't know when that would happen. <clears throat> but what we can do is we can actually do simple things like reaching out and checking on one another. The power of a simple check-in on a friend, texting a friend to say, hey, I'm just thinking about you. We're swinging by somebody who might be eating by themselves in the dining hall to say, hey, do you want some company? These seem like small things, but what you do when you check in on someone is you're not just checking in on them. You're telling them, I see you. You have value. You're not invisible. And that's important in a world where so many people are feeling invisible. And that is really important because being connected is not about how many people you're surrounded by. It's about the quality of those connections. Having just one or two good friends who you felt you could be yourself with, who you would show up for if they were having a tough time, that is the key to feeling connected, to feeling like you belong. You're just left with one thing to just remember, that you have the power to actually help address loneliness in your life and the life of other people through this simple act of checking on one another. And when you check on them, you're not just sending them a message, you're actually reminding yourself that you have value to bring to the world, that you can forge a deep and meaningful connection with another human being. Absolutely. This is such an incredibly important topic, and we appreciate how much you're investing in the younger generations in order to create a brighter future. I, I just am so glad to be here. And you know, one of the things we wanted to make sure we did during this time together was make sure we didn't just talk about the problem, but shared some concrete steps we could each take in our day-to-day -day lives. And, and I want to leave you actually with one of those steps in the form of a challenge. And it's something that we call our five for five challenge. We're actually going to do the first day today. We're going to do right, uh, right here, right now. Take out your phone. We're going to actually do this by using technology for good. I want you to think about someone that you're grateful for in your life. 
and I want you to write a text or an email to that person. And it could be a single line, but just tell them that you're thinking about them and why you're grateful to them. And when you're done, I want you to turn the flashlight on on your phone and just hold it up. Each one of these lights represents a ray of hope, a ray of connection that's gone out into the universe. Someone is going to take out their phone, check their inbox, look at their text messages and see this beautiful message that you sent them. They're going to feel seen. They're going to feel like they matter. And it's going to be because of what you did in these 30 seconds. It's like dropping a pebble into a pond with ripples of goodness and connection that go out and reach them. What we've talked about today, the power of human connection, this is really the defining challenge we've got to address during our time. One thing I know for sure is that when we are alone, then sometimes even regular day-to-day -day adversity can feel utterly overwhelming. But when we are together, when we know that there are other people who have our back, then we can take on all kinds of adversity together. This is about returning to who we are, to our true nature. So this is a journey we're on together. You're not alone in that journey. And just remember, we make building social connection a priority in our lives, if we commit to actually talking to each other more openly about social connection and how we really build community, then as hard as these times may seem, we will come through this stronger, more unified, more fulfilled than at any point in our lives. And there's nothing more that I could want for all of you than that. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.